right, we got a call yesterday about a uh, tree that had fallen onto a uh, client's house here. We got our crew dispatched early this morning and we're getting started on it now. As you can see, the large oak tree has fallen against the back of the house. We can see at least a good amount of damage from here. I'm sure there's gonna be quite a bit more once we get all the foliage off of the house and clear it off and uh, kind of see what is uh, going on underneath. So one thing we wanna check for is any limbs that may have come through the roof uh, into the ceiling or into the attic. Um, the reason being is when you start lifting the, the weight off of the house, if there's something hooked inside here, you can cause uh, extensively more damage. So uh, this one luckily looks like there's not too much actually piercing the roof, just mostly a large impact zone here that crushed everything. That does help us out a little bit. All right, we got our mats laid right here. We're gonna get the bucket truck backed in to position there. The crane will set up here in the driveway and then we will use the opposite side of the yard as a drop zone for all the debris. All right, we've got the truck in position now, uh, but the first thing we wanna do is clear away the lines that are, or I'm sorry, we wanna clear away the limbs that are near the uh, service drop line right here. Uh, it looks like it's so no damage there, um, but we want to get the line clear before we start hooking anything up to the crane. Jacob's operating in the bucket and he's cut himself a nice hole to get in there. We uh, have identified our first pick we're going to make for the day. I've went ahead and got a nice grip on it. He's just completed the cut. This grip's going to, or this cut is going to be our first pick. So we're going to get a lot of information out of the tree, what's going to happen with it. And it also gives us a better visual check on uh, being able to see what Jacob's working with in there. Rip it out. I really can't see uh, the, the roof too much yet. Um, still working on stuff that is floating and doesn't have any uh, pressure on the roof uh, so we can keep going uh, with this stuff that's floating so we can get a little better view of the limbs that have pressure on them uh, and go from there when it comes to trees like this the risk gets uh height so we have oh to complete a better strategy him tackling the limbs that are suspended allows us to get a better visual and it also gets us to where we can see some of the wood that's under tension. When that wood becomes under tension, the fibers inside it start to react a lot different than a regular cut. So uh, let me start wiggling this out of here. And then I'll... I was going to say, can you rotate Back in here for the skid. To your uh, that left side a little bit? It's just that button's on this dead limb. I don't want to Yeah, snap. I'm trying to, but I don't really have. I can rotate the boom. Yeah, rotate the boom a little bit. This is our uh, largest pick of the day, and it's pretty central and where we uh, were able to get in there and make that cut. With the uh, foliage spanning as far as it did, we had limited visual, but having this pick out of there is going to give Jacob a lot better direction for where he's headed. He's going to be able to see a lot more of the tree, and then I'll be able to see Jacob a lot better. Allow us to work a, little, a lot safer. That is a big pick. It's quite the picture. Big. It's a big piece. That's a whole tree. That's you how see, big it is. You see yeah. any damage up there yet, Jake? No, not really. There's okay. uh, a lot of leaves blocking. You guys done with this rope? We take that trip yes. hazard out of the We're mix. Throw a fit about it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, chosen to move on to slings. The Beckonil claw has a lot of pressure, but there is clearance with where that uh, crab actually closes. And some of these more finer, smaller limbs don't give us uh, theory that we need to get a grab around them. These slings get us a nice choke point on these limbs, and we can adjust the diameter of those. 
to accommodate for what we need. And it also uh, helps with our capacities, considering that we don't have to make any deductions for uh, our picks. And all of the weight on the tree itself is now just being supported by the boom. At this point, we've made a pretty good dent into the canopy of hey, the tree. Uh, we're working on um, we're still deep. finding the, the pressure points on the uh, on the roof, and that's when we'll have to get a little more strategic about where we make our cuts and how we uh, rig it off the house. Um, but we're making pretty good progress so far, and uh, shouldn't be too much longer before we get to those tricky uh, pressure points. All right, so we've taken off a pretty good portion of the canopy, and now we have to be at least aware of the possibility that the root ball could be enough uh, counterweight to try and stand the trunk back up. Um, so what we did is we placed a couple of skid steers back here on the root ball to support it in case it does try to lift up, which uh, could cause more damage to the house. It could interfere with uh, Jacob up there in the bucket. Um, and it could throw debris, you know, anywhere. It, it's, it's very unpredictable if it were to try to stand up on its own. So those are here just as a kind of a fail-safe backup plan. Um, so we can keep an eye on it and gauge the amount of pressure you're talking on about. Uh, the root ball standing it up. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this is our last limb to be removed that had pressure on the roof. After this, we're gonna be moving on to the larger trunk pieces. Clearly, we haven't seen a lot of shifting out of the trunk. Although at some point, it's kind of nice if it does want to stand up. So we have the opportunity to consider <laughs> trying to pull this thing back now with the skid steers since we have all this room in this yard to work. Once we uh, took off enough of the weight that we uh, thought Michael. we could stand this thing back up with the uh, skid steer pulling on it, uh, we tried that. Skid steer pulled it up no problem, but where the root ball pulled it out of the ground, uh, the, the root ball doesn't want to sit right back in just perfectly. So we're kind of in the middle of pulling it up right now, and we're going to use our stump grinder to uh, remove some of the rough edges off the, the edge of the root ball 
so that it has a smooth surface to sit back into. So that shouldn't take us too long and then we'll be able to stand this thing up the rest of the way. All right, so once we got that uh, trunk and root ball um, stood up to a uh, reasonable point where it was gonna create too much tension to continue to pull it over and stand it up, so we decided to go ahead and put a, a face cut in it, um, open face so that we had plenty of room for it to uh, hinge over and stay connected. Um, we had to add an extra skid on it uh, to make sure we had enough pulling power since we were pulling against the back lean. Um, you know, we took our time and communicated through it and it ended up going just right. All right guys, thanks for checking in with us and uh, stay in tune for a, uh, another successful emergency response video. Um, the large oak tree on the house is successfully cleaned up now, so a uh, pretty good day all in all. Thanks again and like, subscribe, and leave a comment for us. See you next time.